Okay, hi. Uh, my name's Ted. I'm the uh, lead developer of a cross-platform data hashing tool called Quick Hash GUI, um, which has been around since 2011. It's been hosted on SourceForge since then. Um, but around the tail end of 2016, I decided to uh, give it its own web platform, and this is it. So to get the tool, you would go to quickhash-gui.org, and there's information on there. Um, about the program and what have you and this video replaces the existing one or hopefully it will replace it um, uh, will replace the existing one that's been around uh, for a few years now but um, given the improvements to quick cash over the last few years I thought it was time for a new video so to get the program you would go to the download section there's various other bits on here um, so you can donate for example if you like the program um, you can see screenshots read about the project, uh, access the GitHub SourceForge page, not SourceForge, the GitHub page uh, because it is an open source project. So you go to the download section and you download the version for your particular platform. 32-bit uh, or 64-bit isn't particularly accounted for within the download section, you just download the zip and choose whichever one you need. Um, I'll explain in, in a minute but there isn't a particularly a difference for the Windows version whether you use 32 or 64, but there is more so for, for Linux. Uh, you, you can also run it on Apple Mac OS X, by the way, as well. So once you've downloaded the tool and extracted the uh, content from the zip, you would have something like this for the Windows version, um, which are the executables and the user manual. The user manual is fairly comprehensive. Um, it is updated periodically with the version releases. Um, you can read through there about the tool, how it works, what it includes. Uh, there's quite a lot of information in there. Um, useful kind of bedtime reading if you can't sleep. Um, okay, so a brief bit about the differences between 32 and 64 bit. Performance wise, there is no difference. Um, so, on the whole, you might as well just use the 32 bit version. Regardless, the only reason that 64-bit matters for Windows is that in uh, the program files folder of a 64-bit Windows operating system, some of the files are presented slightly differently um, to applications that request them. Um, that's really the only difference. Um, but on the whole, if you're just hashing data in data volumes and things like that, the 32-bit one will suffice. Um, okay, so having downloaded it and worked out which version you need oh by the way for Linux it's more important you can only run the 32-bit version on a 32-bit version of Linux and likewise for 64-bit uh, and Apple Mac is uh, the, pretty much the same as Windows there's, there's one uh, application folder to run so you run the program there's no installation needed there's no licensed DLLs um, licensed dongle sorry no DLLs none of that no third-party nonsense to do with Java runtime, runtime environments or Python interpreters or any of that. It's not needed. So it launches and you faced with these tabs across the top. Uh, the text tab is for hashing text data basically. So you can paste into here or type um, whatever you like. It might be lists of email addresses that you need to hash on a either in their entirety or on a line by line basis which is what these buttons are for because I gather with Google AdWords and things um, sometimes you need to provide hashes of email addresses and, and all of that um, so you can type in here and as you can see the hash changes as you type um, obviously depending on which hash algorithm you've chosen you can click a different one at will and it will change dynamically uh, new with version 2.80 of quick hash is the xx hash uh, algorithm um, this is another minor difference actually between the versions if you run the 64-bit version of quick hash you'll get xx hash 64 if you run the 32-bit version of quick hash you'll get x hash 32 uh, for which i gather from reading it there is a bit of a difference in performance of that algorithm uh, but for the others it doesn't really matter um, uh, you can also choose to save output of your text field here to a text file and it can either just contain the hashes that you've computed or it can contain the uh, lines that you've hashed and their respective hash value.
depending on these buttons, but read the manual for a bit more information about that. So the file tab is where you would select a file, so uh, one individual file on its own. Um, so it will just simply hash with whatever you've chosen there and it will rehash if you choose a different algorithm. Um, for big files that can sometimes take a few seconds or a few minutes depending on the size of the file. When you do that the interface may appear unresponsive and it might say not responding and all the rest of it, you get the donut of doom. Um, that doesn't mean that the program isn't working, it's just that it can't respond to you until it's finished hashing that particular big file. So just leave it running and it will finish eventually. The start and end times are included and the time taken will be listed there. You can also drag and drop uh, a file into the interface like so and it will recompute. Files, plural, is to hash multiple files that are in a particular folder and you can either choose to just hash the files that are in the root of that folder or any uh, subsequent subdirectories of that folder. There are various options, so by default it will save the output as a CSV file, it will also show it you here, I'll show that in a minute. You can choose to save it as a web page, you can flag, du flag duplicate files and then delete them if you want to. You can ignore subdirectories. On the deletion by the way, no responsibility if it deletes the wrong duplicate. Um, so back up your data first if there's any uh, uncertainty about that. Um, you can choose whether to ignore subdirectories or not. Uh, Hidden folders um, are dependent on the operating system. It's quite hard to explain in a video, so you need to read the manual about that. Um, and you can choose file masks, so you, you might just have want to apply it to, say, Word documents or spreadsheets or whatever. You can put as many as you like in there, separated with a um, uh, semicolon. So I'm not going to do that for this. I'm just going to select a directory which in this case is going to be my sample data folder. So I've got in there two subfolders and there's loads of files in the root. So I'm going to click OK. It rattles off as you could see there and then it prompts you to save the output in the in the folder from where you're running quick cache from which might be a removable media drive. So in here I'm just going to type result1 and click save and I'll show you the output in a minute. So here's the column, uh, the columns, you can file name, path, hash value. Um, quick cache is Unicode aware as well on all platforms. So whether there's Unicode, UTF-8 characters in the file name or in the content, it doesn't matter, it treats it accordingly. Um, it lists the path and the hash values. You can copy all of the clipboard data if you want by clicking the clipboard button there and it will additionally um, enable you to just paste it into a, a text file. Um, and if you've got lots and lots and you've decided you need to stop it, you can click stop to abort it. Uh, the copy tab is very useful for people that are migrating data from one place to another. They might not have digital forensic software to um, uh, uniquely stamp the data effectively and this is where this is handy. Um, you can choose a source destination, i.e. where the files are that you want to move. So I'm going to choose there and the destination folder would be somewhere else. Uh, and similar options to what you had above, um, you, you know, file types, don't rebuild paths, blah, blah, blah. Again, the, you'd need to read the manual to find all about all of those. Um, it will again choose whatever algorithm you've got selected up there. So if I just click go, go to that, it will tell me the date and time of the system that I'm running Quick Cache on and give me an idea of how many files I'm dealing with. So if you're happy with that, you just click yes. It will copy the files like that as it just has done. And it creates a new folder called uh, QH, Quick Cache obviously, and uh, the date and time that you did the process. Useful if you're doing multiple. Um, migrations of data and you don't want to mix them all. Um, so again I'll uh, save the results of that as well. Um, there is a little bug in there, that I've, the file count slightly different and in 2.80 it will be fixed with 2.81. Um, again you can clipboard the data of that if you want to by clicking clipboard, you go back into a text editor or whatever and uh, 
click paste and it will put it all in there so it gives you the source file name and path the source file hash the new destination location and its new new hash which should if all has gone well be the same so you get some integrity and an audit of that integrity with regards to what the data was when it was on storage location one and what it was when it went to storage location two in addition you can use unc mode so if you're copying data from one network path to another as opposed to a mounted drive um, you can just paste your unc paths directly into there um, and you can copy data from one network to another you can compare two files so um, uh, i'm not going to do it because it's it's obvious if you've got two copies of a file one in one folder one in another you choose simply select the first file and then the second file and click compare now and it will tell you if they're the same file or not uh, the compare directories button allows you to uh, compare two folders to check they're both the same so if I just quickly make a copy of sample data and now I'll choose uh, the first folder sample data and then for my second folder I will choose sample data 2 um, and then this button again is new to version 2.80 and makes it a lot faster for large data volumes uh, by default it's ticked and it is tabulate only encountered errors instead of all files in other words it will only list for you the files that have gone wrong um, it won't list all the other ones um, it makes it a lot faster when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands or millions of files um, but it doesn't really matter for, for lesser amounts um, I'm going to untick that for the purposes of the demonstration to show you so if I click compare now it will rattle through uh, folder A compute the hashes of folder A then it will go through folder B and compute the hashes of folder B if both the lists are exactly the same it will report a match um, it's important to note that uh, it's a comparison of the actual data within the folders so it won't necessarily say it's a match if the folder structures are different um, it's just concentrating on the files that are within them and then again you can copy the content of the clipboards or you can save it all to a file and again it's date and time stamped like so and gives you counts and progress bars and what have you uh, note it note that you can't just double uh, click one of these and have all of these recomputed uh, in order to do that you would need to choose your algorithm first and then reselect your directories to have it compute with new values um, so the last bit is disks which allows you to examine uh, attached media or devices in your host machine so I'm running this in a virtual machine so that's the only one that's listed um, and I haven't got time to show you it but if I plug in a USB drive and click refresh disk list it will list a removable media there um, and you basically click compute hash having selected whatever hash algorithm you want what's useful about this is that it allows you to combine multiple hashes at the same time so you might choose MD5 and SHA1 rather than them individually or you might choose SHA1 and SHA256 because a lot of people prefer to use SHA256 and also SHA1 these days uh, you might want to use SHA512 but note it will take quite a while um, if it's a fairly big disk and you can also use the really really fast XX hash 64 which is brilliant for anything that's not kind of crucial so if it's not for uh, kind of a digital forensics matter or something like that um, just your own kind of personal data or something XX hash will be far faster than any of these um, and it will create a log file of what you've chosen and what algorithm you chose and things like that and you can also choose uh, logical volumes as well and um, if you right click you can view various bits and pieces about this um, such as uh, the technical data with the actual drive so it will give you information about uh, what uh, partitions are on it and uh, its health and sector size and, and things like that um, okay that's it so I've shown you the user manual I've shown you the new website and I've shown you the interface um, 
like I say, it's used by thousands of people now across the world in all kinds of um, circles, medical, military, government, private industry, individuals, personal use. Um, it's a pretty good tool and it's helping people with their kind of data integrity needs, especially these days when it comes to downloading media um, such as uh, operating system distributions and things like that, um, ISOs and all of that kind of thing. This is particularly useful. Um, and in fact, the expected hash value field here is quite good for that as well, because if you've got a hash value on a website for a given download, you've downloaded it, you can, if you wish, paste that into there, um, uh, as in paste the hash value from the website into there. And when it finishes the computation, if there's anything in that field other than three dots, i.e. a hash value, it will compare the computed hash against what it's expecting. Um, and tell you if it's a match or not easier on your eyes rather than going through looking at it anyway that's it so that's quick hash GUI the cross-platform data hashing tool um, if you like it please consider donating it uh, make, not donating it making a donation um, and uh, if you if it's helped in your workflow in any way and you would recommend it to others then please do so the website is quickcash-gui.org okay thanks very much